The residents of Karingai enjoy a unique and diverse urban environment. Adjacent to three national parks, over 100,000 residents share the region with 800 plant species and 700 fauna species. Now more than ever, it's vital that we understand how to manage our waste and recycle effectively to preserve our environment. Everything in our homes has come from the environment in the form of a natural resource. Items made from timber, plastics derived from oil or gas, steel from iron ore. They all come at a cost to our environment. Some of these items come from non-renewable resources. So the more items we can reuse and recycle, the less we take from the environment. Karingai Council provides comprehensive waste services to help ensure a sustainable future. But it all starts with you. This video shows what is provided in Council Waste Services, practical tips on how to use these services effectively, and why it's important to manage our waste and recycle the correct way. Karingai Council provides four colour-coded bins. The red lid for general waste, the yellow lid for mixed container recycling, the blue lid for paper recycling, and a green bin for green waste. The small bin with the red lid is for general waste and is collected every week. Everything you put in this bin goes to landfill, so it's important to take steps and minimise what you do dispose of as general waste. One way is to separate your food scraps for composting. A compost bin or worm farm is a great way to reduce waste sent to landfill and help your garden thrive. Up to 40% of the contents in the average household bin could be composted. Imagine the environmental benefit if you could reduce the waste sent to landfill by 40%. Sort containers and other recyclables from your general waste. If you need to use bin liners, choose a bin liner that is biodegradable. Food scraps, plastic wrappers, disposable nappies, plastic bags are all common general waste items. Do not use the red bin to dispose of building waste, vehicle batteries, chemicals, hot ashes, sharps waste or recyclables. Some retailers accept plastic bags and other soft plastics or offer recycling programs for domestic batteries, electronic waste and mobile phones. Check the Council's website for additional recycling programs. After collection, your general waste is delivered to a transfer station, where it is compacted into special containers for rail transport. This rail service transfers over 400,000 tonnes of waste every year, removing thousands of trucks off our roads. The containers are then taken a short distance to the Woodlawn Bioreactor, where the waste is degraded and stabilised using moisture, microorganisms, bacteria and nutrients. This process produces methane and extracts organic nutrients left within the waste. Over 30 kilometres of piping laid through the landfill captures the methane, which is used as fuel to power generators to create electricity, heat and carbon dioxide. Methane is a greenhouse gas with 20 times greater impact on climate change than carbon dioxide. At peak capacity, this bioreactor will generate enough electricity to power 35,000 homes. The heat generated from the process is used in aquaculture and horticulture. While these innovations help reduce the impact of general waste on our environment, it's important to remember that everything that goes in the red littered bin goes to landfill. So only place items in general waste if they cannot be recycled or composted. The bin with the yellow lid is for mixed container recycling and is collected fortnightly. Use this bin for containers from the kitchen, like glass bottles and jars milk and juice cartons, plastic containers from the bathroom and laundry. The yellow lidded bin is also for items like steel and aluminium cans, 
and empty dry paint tins. Don't forget to recycle your aerosol cans too. Currently only 35% of steel aerosol cans are being recycled. When recycling containers, always remove lids. They may be manufactured from a different material, so keep them separate for easier sorting. Containers with food scraps cannot be recycled, so are automatically rejected. Before recycling, use a strainer to capture food scraps, then rinse containers with used dishwater. After rinsing steel cans, push the lid into the can and squeeze the top together to save space. Aluminium cans don't need to be rinsed. Just tip them up until no liquid drips. That's clean enough. Place all your recyclables loosely in the bin. Do not place them inside plastic bags, as this will cause the bag and all its contents to be sent to landfill. Despite being labelled as recyclable, do not place polystyrene foam and plastic bags in bins for council collection. Some supermarkets accept plastic bags. Or consider taking your own reusable bags for shopping. Don't deliberately smash glass, as it reduces the amount that could be recycled. There are some glass products that cannot be recycled. They include window or mirror glass, glass cooking dishes or drinking vessels, ceramics, Pyrex or china. These items have a different melting temperature that cause defects in the new containers. They are also nearly impossible to detect during sorting, so it's up to you to ensure that non-recyclable glass is discarded as general waste. After collection, these materials are delivered to a materials recovery facility, where they are mechanically sorted for recycling. Plastic is sorted into polymer types, baled, then transported to specialised factories. The different plastics are granulised and reprocessed into all kinds of different materials, from bottles to wheelie bins, outdoor furniture, eco-fleece textiles and more. Glass is mechanically separated, crushed, ready for delivery to the plant for melting and remoulding. Glass is 100% recyclable and can be recycled infinitely. Aluminium cans are sorted mechanically using an eddy current. They are then crushed and baled, ready for recycling. Around 10% of Australia's electricity is used to make new aluminium. Manufacturing one aluminium can from raw materials requires the same amount of energy as producing 20 cans from recycled materials. That is a massive energy saving. Steel is 100% recyclable, so its life cycle is potentially endless. And because of its magnetic properties, is separated faster than any other recyclable material. Recycling steel cans uses 75% less energy than producing steel from raw materials. Every week in Australia, 17.5 million steel cans are recycled. Enough steel to build 900 new cars. The blue bin is for paper and cardboard only and is also collected fortnightly. Recycle all newspapers and magazines, food and goods packaging. Just about every room in the home will have paper-based items that could be recycled. Before recycling, remove plastics and paper or cardboard contaminated with food scraps, chemicals or paints. These cannot be recycled, so should be disposed of as general waste. To maximise your bin space, flatten or crush all cardboard boxes. Don't place paper or cardboard into plastic bags. This contaminates the process, so the entire bag and its contents will go to landfill. After collection, paper materials are recovered through a mechanical and manual sorting system. Once the paper and cardboard have been further separated into various grades, they are baled ready for recycling. Water is mixed with the paper and turned into pulp. It is then screened to remove contaminants ready for reprocessing. Manufacturing from recycled paper uses 90% less water and 50% less energy than manufacturing from trees. Paper can be recycled up to eight times for a range of uses, from cardboard packaging to stationery, 
and newsprint. The green bin is collected fortnightly and should only be used to discard plant waste from your garden, like leaf litter, bush and hedge trimmings, grass and weeds, and small branches up to 150 millimetres in diameter and 600 millimetres in length. Green waste bins that are overfilled cannot be collected, so make sure the lid can be fully closed before placing on the street. Don't place green waste in plastic bags, as the entire contents will be sent to landfill. The green bin is not for recyclables or general waste. After collection, the contents are taken for vegetation recycling. Unlike other resource recovery processes, all contaminants have to be removed by hand. So remember, if it doesn't grow in your garden, it doesn't go in the green bin. The waste vegetation is loaded into a grinder. After being ground down, it is then matured and rotated into giant windrows for several months. After maturation, the material is further processed into a range of products. These products include mulch, compost and soil conditioners. Keringai Council strives to provide the best solutions available, but it's your actions that determine the success of the services we provide. Choose items with minimal packaging. When possible, buy in bulk. Choose items with packaging that can be recycled through Council services. And think about what happens to the packaging after you've used it. Choose items that can be reused. Give away or sell unwanted items that might be useful to others. Only use council cleanups as a last resort for items that can't be recycled or reused. See the council website for details on your waste and recycling services and disposal of waste not included in council collections. Ultimately, we are all responsible for the waste we create. Take responsibility for how you dispose of waste and how you recycle. Together, we can work to preserve and protect our precious environment. Sustainable living. It all starts with you.